that it's really great to be here. <laughs> but, you know, uh, obviously, uh, I've had my trials and tribulations sure. and, along with everybody else. But, I've had some, uh, I've been to the mountain, and I've had some uh, fantastic moments based on the fact that I get an opportunity to do a variety of things that we all just imagine. Uh, and, and just, yeah, I, I was in the lunar excursion module before it went uh, to the moon. I was, I laid down in the hammock that was in the lunar excursion module, assisted by one of the guys who, who uh, went up there. I, I, I raised money for children and, no. and, uh, and, uh, and veterans. So I, I raised money but with people like y'all who, who gave me the money that I can validly say I raised. You, 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 you all were there. I've, I've performed in wonderful uh, works of art that I'm very proud to have been associated with. I, I, I've, got, uh, I've got a family of 15 in Los Angeles, three daughters and their children. And, and I've come for electric bikes the uh, last couple of years. Uh, I'm with a company called Pentago Bikes. They're electric bikes. So, so that I'm able to go with 15, 14 other members of my family. And there are kids, 13, 14 year old kids who are in the midst of the, their physical prowess. And I am too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing is, I can keep up with them for about five strides. And then the, the concept of when you're bicycling, is you go along and feeling good, right? It's great. And then you, at some point in time, you say, okay, it's time to turn around and go back. And now the prospect of getting back home. <laughs> but with an electric bike, you just hit the little button, away you go. So <laughs> I'm able to stay up with the family. So we've been doing these great bicycle trips for the day. Like go someplace and go bicycling for the day, have lunch, go bike, and nobody gets tired because you've got this little thing. So I, I've had associations with people. I, I've talked to some of the greatest, I've interviewed some of the greatest n names. I, 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 I interviewed um, Stephen Hawking. Maybe the last interview that Stephen Hawking was capable of giving. I, 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 uh, let, me, let, me, let me tell you about that. So, I'm doing this show and I write to him, appeal to him to let me interview him. And he was a great fan of Star Trek. And um, so I wrote to him and said, can I, can I come to Cambridge and interview for this show? And he agreed. But I had to submit the questions uh, well in advance. So we sent him three or four questions. Uh, and the, the, the deal was that I would ask those very same questions, worded exactly that same way, because he spent the months in between, and I don't know how much time, but a lot of time, as I learned later, composing the answers to the question. And so he was ready, and then he also, uh, as, as, uh, as people got back, he said, he wants to ask you a question. So ask me a question. Okay. So we get to his modest house in Cambridge, and we set up the cameras, we're waiting for him. And I'm seated in a chair uh, like this, and he comes to, and he's gonna sit in, a, in his wheelchair over here. And then we're waiting about a half an hour, and the town, the hallway he comes, as you all know, slumped over, uh, he's incapable of, uh, of any muscular action, except the brightness of his eyes betrayed his intelligence and this humor. And then they wheeled his chair so he sat beside me here and he had a, a, a computer right there. So I was able to look at the computer. And, and, and then there are people off screen 
with cards so that I could read the question that I had asked him exactly as I had asked him because any variation would, is, if he had a prepared answer, I couldn't go off, off script. So, so I read the question and he, he had a little mouse uh, on his left cheek muscle and he was able to, but almost pinky, move the mouse and I could see the, uh, whatever you call the thing, and, uh, going to a letter, the letter, the letter, as he, as he wrote out his answer, or in these pieces of the verbal answer, where he went to whatever the switch was, and this mechanical voice read out his answer. So it was really uh, extraordinary, and then uh, he wrote out, I have a question for you. Yes, sir, what, uh, what is your question? And now, laboriously, by winking his eye, he wrote out, what is your favorite episode? <laughs> Star Trek. What's my favorite episode? That's the guy who discovered black holes. <laughs> Wants to know my favorite episode? Are you nuts? <laughs> it was it was a huge laugh. I mean, did it both because he was a fan, but he did it as a, as a, as a uh, sense of humor. Uh, these experiences, as a result of having the celebrity that Star Trek gave, have been an extraordinary thing. I've I, I have I've reached. Many, I'm eternally grateful to Captain Kirk and Star Trek for giving me the opportunities that uh, I've had since Star Trek. Okay? Woo. Look, I, I think it's interesting that, I mean, to you, I mean, you guys were just showing up every day to go to work like we do. I mean, it's what you do for a living and you don't really realize how it impacts lives. So uh, last night I was telling you backstage as I was preparing for tonight, I was watching like three hours worth of the incredible interviews that you've been a part of. And I remember one guy, because they talked about the uh, uh, racial diversity on the show, and the one guy that was interviewing you said he had read somewhere where Martin Luther King Jr. had said that Star Trek was the only television show that he would let his kids watch because of the racial diversity and everything you guys touched. It was, it was more than just, you know, blowing Klingons to hell. You guys had, 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 a, had a message. And, and, that, and so you're, I mean, you're touching Martin Luther King Jr. for goodness sake. Right. Uh, tell that to the rich nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be serious for one second. Right, this kind of goes along. We talked about Stephen Hawking. Uh, uh, Hogan in Frankenmuth wants to know which celebrity are you most starstruck, or have you been most starstruck to meet yourself? Huh. Um, Jack. <laughs> well, uh, Marlon Brando lived. I live on a hill, and he lived uh, 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 appropriately at the top of the hill, <laughs> and uh, and. I really admired Marlon Brown. And I, I mean, he apparently uh, would come down off the hill down to uh, Ventura Boulevard in the valley, in the San Fernando Valley, and go to the very stores that I would go to, restaurants and stuff. But I never met him. And I, I, I often wanted to just ring the bell and say, I'm Shannon. And 